Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fulfilled Music Preneur Podcast. Today I have with me Kay Cote. Really, really excited to chat with this amazing lady. I am going to let her introduce herself. Hi, Kay. Thank you so much for being here. Do thank you want you, to tell us about you? Yeah. For sure. Well, thank you so much, A.B., for having me on the show. A little bit about me. Yes, my name is Kay Cote, and I am the founder of Amplify EDM. And we are a music-related company here out in Austin, Texas. And so Amplify EDM is a community of artists. Uh, we, you know, we kind of target the electronic music scene, but we're also open to working with a variety of artists. So we do two things. We plan parties to celebrate local talent and give the community something incredible to hear and enjoy and bring community or bring music lovers and artists together. And then we also provide a, a voice for artists through our media platform and our podcast, AmpedCast. And so I developed this in, it was about a year ago, it was July of last year of uh, 2023, I have to think. <laughs> and that's how it got started. And it was all stemmed from myself looking for community. I had recently moved to Austin and I was looking for a community to, to find. and. I found amazing artists. So I thought, well, why don't I start something that can attract other artists and we can build that community within it. So that's how Amplify EDM got started. And that's a little about me. Wow. Thank you so much. Do you know what? I, I find that really fascinating. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was like, I need to chat to you on the podcast because we cannot really make or create the impact we want to as artists without a community. I mean, every little thing needs other people involved. Um, so learning to grow a community around your music, around you, is so important. But that is something that people struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, me in particular, even though I've learned the power of it, I still need to remind myself often to, okay, you need to send to people, you need to engage, you need to... You need to email your list. You need to nurture people because if it was just left to me, I will just be with a book curled on my sofa. That is my happy place. Or just <laughs> writing. You know, we we love creating, but mm -hmm. it's the, the bigger picture that sometimes we lose. Um, we, we lose the picture. We, we we lose that element, and that is so important in getting our music out there. Wouldn't you say? Definitely. It is. It's all about that community. And I found so much encouragement in, in creating a platform. And um, yeah, even like it helped me get back to my artistry as a, as a creative as well. So yeah, I agree with you there. And the fact that you saw a need, you needed that as well. And you created, that's another really great way to create value it's when you need something and you can see that other people will find that valuable as well. And then you just go get it. You actually create it. That, that's a great way to build community. So I really want to hear about how you got started. But before we dive into that, do you want to take a step back, uh, take a step back with us? <laughs> you talk to us about um, your past, how you got into music, you know, all, all of those, because they're important as well, aren't they? <laughs> Definitely. I'm happy to share. So I, I was, uh, my mom always said I was practically uh, singing and dancing when I started walking and talking. And I just have always been, I've always had that natural entertainer kind of personality. If, you know, I was in school plays. I mean, I think my first play, I was maybe three years old. Wow. I, just, I always did that. And I was from a small community in North Dakota. That's where I grew up. So there wasn't there wasn't a lot of opportunity. So when there was something, my, my parents were very encouraging. So I was able to plug in and uh, throughout my years, I played a variety of instruments and uh, really fell in love with voice. And so voice was my, my main instrument throughout, even throughout college. And so I started with, you know, I played all sorts of things. I loved guitar. I loved piano and I uh, really loved voice. And so it was a great outlet for me as a young person. You know, I struggled with fitting in and I, I got bullied a lot when I was young and, and music was kind of my outlet 
And the people I met through the music community, even in my youth, were the people that I connected with. And they, they gave me that safe space to just feel like I could express myself. Uh, so that was a little bit about like kind of where I got started. And then throughout my years, I did things entertainment wise and, um, you know, got into radio, got into podcasting, did some like local commercials, um, was in a movie and just like little things along the way that I could grab. And then when I, I moved to Austin in 2022 in December and I was on a completely different path, I was um, in the wellness industry. I was like working on um, getting yoga certified and doing those things. And then it was four months later, I kind of found myself in like going through a lot with the move. You know, I faced a lot of hardships and personal hardships and music called me home. And I, I just I remember looking into the Austin skyline one morning. I was out for a morning run. It was just quiet. And I was looking at the skyline. I was like, I meant to do something in that city. I just like had this like knowing I meant to do something. I didn't know what it was yet. And little did I know it was actually getting back into music. And so few months later, I started connecting with local artists, again, felt that sense of home, felt that sense of community that I always had. And I thought, how can I make this better? The music community, the music gives you so much. What can we give back to music? And I um, unintentionally started a business. And that's how Amplify EDM came about. So that's a little bit about my background. Uh, just, you know, try taking little opportunities as I could. And now seeing so much more in a big city that I can be a part of and help grow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I just love that, that feeling of, I know that I need to do something. I don't know what yet, <laughs> but you got started. Um, I, I was talking to a couple of my clients recently and I was like, do you know what? you just need to start, you know, because I, I coach clients on how to monetize their music. And sometimes peeking away, because I my, my main focus is around um, coaching, creating some sort of coaching program. What, what skills do you have? What life experience do you have? What, what lights you up? What are you passionate about? Is there a way you can create value around that? to offer to people around you, right? Mm -hmm. But it can be really scary, you know, trying to say, oh, well, I know enough to get someone to pay me a lot of money. It can be really scary. Um, but I was like, just get started, pick anything. Um, right. because, because I, I remember a saying that, that, that's, that goes like this, um, God can direct a stationary car. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on the move, then you can steer the car and direct it to where you need to go. But if you're stationary, not much is going to happen. You need to be on the move. So I just love that you felt this call. You felt that you needed to do something and you, you got started and, and this happened. You know, I love that. And I, I keep saying to people, guys, you just need to get started. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Don't wait, don't wait to get the full picture. <laughs> mm -hmm just pick something and, and, you know, start offering to your audience because you never know where you'll, you'll end up. You might create something amazing like what you've created, Kay. A hundred percent. It is totally like us, everything's a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I've had to pivot throughout this last year because we didn't know really who we are. We're still trying to fine tune who we are and, and yeah. what my role is and what everybody else's roles are. So yes, it's like one of those things, if you feel a calling, especially like, yeah, God put it on my heart. I was like, I need to do something with this. I'm sitting on this, you know, and I think just coming to this big city and seeing all the local talent and that reinvigorated my soul, like as a musician, as an artist and seeing like there's options here there that I didn't have, you know, before. So, yeah, it's it's uh, one day at a time, but sometimes mm -hmm. it feels like I'm, I'm jumping pretty quick. Like it's just one Thing after another but it's a heck of a lot of fun and I do feel like there's there's something guiding this journey for sure mm, beautiful yes absolutely okay so down to the nitty-gritty if you have an artist who is just getting started maybe working on their first album and wants to start building a community of people around them that are ready to listen to their music how do they get started 
I love this question. Uh, you know, there's so many ways to get started, you know, as an artist, because it can be lonely, especially when you're creating and you're in your studio or you're in your, you know, where you're at and you're not, if you don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of, or if there's a fear around your music, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that hold artists back and myself included. And I've, I've, you know, struggled through many of these things and still do, and still do. I'd say to, you know, build a group of trusted people that, that, can lift you up. You know, I have mentors. I have um, people who've guided me on my journey. Even still back in North Dakota, many of my mentors are actually in, in back home. And, and you start to just put yourself out there, even if it's uncomfortable, start going to shows, go to meetup groups. You can use tools like meetup.com or, you know, other resources to find communities like events within your community to attend. And if you have a friend to go with, that sometimes helps too. Or, you know, a lot of those platforms even have where you can look at the guest list. You can see who's attending and see if you have some mutual friends in common with people or, you know, maybe message somebody and say, hey, this is my first time going to this. What can I expect? Have you went? Like you can find people to connect with. And most people I found are very receptive when I outreach to them because they're most of the time, some, you know, the same boat as well. You know, they've, everybody's had their first time attending something. So I'd say, put yourself out there. Not all events are going to be the same. I've went to events where I, I didn't, it wasn't quite the right fit, but then I learned and I was like, okay, I, I could still manage to take away one positive thing or met, maybe made one connection that can go further. So you never know who you're going to meet, but you have to put yourself out there to, to meet right. people. So I would say, have, have faith, have courage, and uh, bring a friend, you know, bring a friend with you if it helps. Yes, I love that. I love that. Start somewhere, you know, just put yourself out there. Um, I started my music journey pretty much online. <laughs> and I feel like, I feel like sometimes most of it has been online and I still struggle to actually be you know, attend meetings basically. <laughs> it's such a big deal to me because most of the community that really got me going, that got me, you know, mentored me and helped me know what to do in the music industry, we're all online, you know, podcasts and Facebook groups and <laughs> you know, Zoom calls and things like that. Um, and there is certainly power in that, but also there is a different kind of power that comes from actually attending events in person you know actually being in the room it's 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 really beautiful and yeah definitely definitely do that as well <laughs> yeah blended with blend of both you know you might meet someone on an online community that you could go to a, an actual in-person community with you know and meet up in person so there's it takes a it takes all the different things and so yeah it's however you feel most comfortable putting yourself out there, start there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So there's something about building a community, right, of people around you just by, you know, meeting them and hanging out with them. But how can you deepen the relationship to the point where you actually now um, start to serve each other, um, where you get to get them to know, like, and trust you? <laughs> <laughs> to actually maybe partner with you. How do you go about doing that? Uh, this is something that I feel there's a, a blend between organic and intentional um, connections. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's very much like it's a feeling. I know artists, many artists are feelers. And so you start to feel those connections. You'll start to notice the same people at the same type of events and you're going to start to bond with people and and find that deeper level you know maybe you grab a coffee together or grab lunch or something and or go to an event together and you start to build out those people that you can work with mm -hmm. and it, it, it's very natural uh, I, I have a little story so i met my uh, my uh, counterpart evan he's a he does a some of my events set up and he's a master of like sound and things and he's always there by my side and evan and i met in, um, we were in the same kind of, he's a DJ and we were going to these events together for, it was called open decks. It's like open mic, but for DJs. 
And so we would just start, we just started talking and started to get to know each other. And uh, we ended up building this like strong bond. And he, I originally Amplify EDM was a coaching company. So I was coaching DJs to build their marketing, build their voice, you know, put themselves out there, um, build their press kits, things like that. And so Evan signed up for my 12 week course. And during that course, we realized how well we work together. And it, so it became another layer deeper. And then since October of last year, we've been throwing parties together. And I, I, he's, I need him by my side. He, we have our roles. We know which each, our, each other's quirks are. But that was a bond that came very organically. And it just, we started to realize it was a meeting of the minds. And to this day, he's both a, a great personal friend as well as a great professional friend as well. So mm. uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, let it happen, allow it to like become and know that sometimes you'll build a bond with someone and then it's for a season and then there's a, a parting of ways and that's okay too. You know, there's always going to be people entering into our lives and some of them stay there for a long time, some of them there for a short time, but everybody brings either a lesson or a blessing. So uh, yeah, don't be afraid and, and yeah, go ahead and go meet people and see what happens. Yes, I love that. I love that. Absolutely. And would you say that you did some nurturing? So, for example, when you got started, um, these people just probably got to know you by maybe coming to some of the events you, you put together. Um, what did you need to take them through? What customer joined did you need to take them through before they then bought your 12-week um, coaching program? Yes. Uh, so my nurturing journey at that time was very green. It was very, very simple. I had uh, I had met up with, I, well, I ran into Evan at an event. We talked briefly about it. And then we set up a, a call. So my nurture system is, um, I have a link that goes to a, where you can book a call with me. And I have that link in uh, my link tree, my website, you know, a bunch of different things, sometimes a QR code. And so I utilize tools like that to get them into next steps. And then once we get on a call, we'll have like a preliminary call and then I'll schedule a full call with them for a couple of days later. And then when we have that full call, then, then we sign the, the we sign there and then we will meet in person bi-weekly and then online on the other opposite weeks. And so that's my nurture journey is very, very simple at this point. Um, and the same goes for now. I, my, my um, clients are more like, it's, it's kind of a marketplace. So my, I, my clients are venues and those have been organic. Those have been organic growth. Like luckily I've been, you know, asked by other venues to work with them. Uh, so it's, I'm just in my journey, but it's very, very simple. As always, I send them to that link to book a call. And then depending on what call they book is what um, the discussion points are. And then from there, we just uh, start meeting in person. Great. So let's take a step back again to, <laughs> to when you first got started. So right now, you, you said you throw parties to celebrate. Um, artists. How did you even get started on those? And I assume they are pricey. <laughs> so how did you get started? You know, funding, it, it, sometimes, especially with things like party, I'm pretty sure you need lots of hands on deck to make it amazing. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about the process of how all of that got started. Yes, of course. Well, during the time when I was doing the coaching, I had connected with an event coordinator who also was a manager of a, a smaller venue here in East Austin. And I, I had known him already. So I, I went in and I had been like, they had just opened and I, so I was supportive and going in and I knew the guy and um, we just started talking. And then I originally, my first plan was to just get a side job doing artist booking. And I thought, oh, maybe this venue would want an artist booker. And so I, I kind of, I put a little pitch together and I, I was like, hey, you know, I, I was just wondering, I'd love to throw a party here or a series of parties or see if you need anything for those kind of services. And he said, write me a proposal. 
And so I was like, oh, okay. So I'm, it's my own party now. And because of our relationship, we were able to uh, mitigate some of those additional venue costs and we ended up doing an exchange. So he would give us the space and then we would bring a bunch of people and then they would focus on the drink sales. And so when it comes to planning a party, there's different venues do different things and finding what's right for you and your budget is so important. And so we found an option that was fitting to us as a startup. You know, we were only bringing it, you know, free marketing to his place, to his establishment. We were, you know, putting a lot of work into the parties. And so that was a really great way to, to get established. And so that is how we really got started. And, you know, you find, again, it's all about relationships and how you build them. That's number one, because somebody will give you a break. If you're really passionate about what you're doing, like you're going to find help along the way. And since then, you know, we just built out a team of volunteers. You know, we had volunteers who were just highly excited about the music industry. And that's that's how we got started, you know, was the humble beginnings. But you find that support. And if you're giving something very valuable, it it oftentimes is well well received. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's going to be other cases where it goes differently. And and to be prepared for those is good, too. Uh, But that's a little bit of how we got started throwing parties. Wow. Amazing. So power of partnerships, <laughs> collaboration. Yes. <laughs> Powerful. But also it sounds like you thought about what they could need and you just approach them. Um, mm-hmm. And you never know what could happen if, if you only just make the ask, <laughs> right? So, yeah. Do you ever feel like, do you have um, certain ways that you know that it's it's the right time to approach someone? So it, it, some people feel like, oh, I don't want to be like I'm asking, asking, asking all the time. And, you know, how do you navigate that? When is it too early to approach someone? <laughs> about a possible collaboration well i say it's never too early um in i say that with a grain of salt though so (laughs) i would say you know if you know somebody and you've supported like in my case i had already been supporting his events and we've had conversations around you know me, me being a speaker um and i've done that so it was a very like reciprocal um in the beginning time that's how it was like i spoke at one of his uh events as like as to bring something to the table and then he you know in turn gave the space so i'd say uh, collaborations and trade so if you've uh, created a, a good relationship with someone where you feel you could bring value like genuine value and if they seem like they're kind of looking for that see where you can add value like always think about that value add and like always go in with that mindset because that kind of sets you up for success for when you make yeah. the ask. And I've I've had to ask for for big things in my life, but it's because of that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to always bring that value. Like the time that I'm going to bring to your establishment is going to bring you a, a value in return. Yeah. And so that I think is, you know, creating good work, setting yourself up, as a professional. And then also just like building those relationships. Sometimes it's a maybe later, you know, sometimes it's a, you make the ask and it doesn't work at that time, but that you can circle back like when you're more established. And so Mm -hmm. I just keep a list of contacts and some of them are a no. And I always take the no's as a, as it's it's still positive because sometimes it's, if it's not a good fit for you, then that's a good way to kind of weed out those fits that yeah. are those like those not quite the right fits. It's okay. Rejection is okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a big part of it too. Someone said this that um a you never give up until you get a no. <laughs> so if you've just not heard from someone after you sent an email, you keep following up. <laughs> When you get a no, then you know it's a no, you move on. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you keep following up might actually then make them finally reply you. And <laughs> you never know. But that's really important because 
if if it's a no, at least now you know it's a no. <laughs> and the reason yes. may also help you know what you need to do differently the next time, you know. So absolutely. I think we need to get really good at taking no's and, and moving on because there is uh, there's something positive about them as well. And I think as artists, one of the reasons we get discouraged is when we send a, send a bunch of emails and we hear nothing back. But actually that happens to a lot of people, not just artists. Um, mm -hmm. We just need to have a system for, for following up. Um, there's been several um, workflows um, or like documents where they you put in a spreadsheet and put the, the last date you emailed them so you can know when it's time to follow up and things like that. Yeah, so you can make it um, do it in a way where you separate the emotion from it, right? Where it's not such a big deal if you get a no. I think that's really important to, to move on and to get used to making that big ask so we're not shying away from it. I agree with you 100%. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, you know, you think about some of the greats that were rejected over and over and over. And then yeah. they were like, at their, the end of it, they're like, I can't do this anymore. And then all of a sudden, there's one big break. You know, it's we, the, when we fail, like when we choose to fail or when we choose to stop and you keep going, you know, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna give you a yes, you know, I, a good story, actually. Um, I'm really good friends with William Hung, who was on American Idol. Remember, he sang the Ricky Martin song. It was a long time ago now. Uh, but William, you know, his story is kind of a testament to that. Where, I mean, Simon was not not kind to him, and William pers was very persistent and ended, ended up singing on stage with Ricky Martin. And he tells that story. Him and I shared the stage at a at a conference once, and. The guy is just such a honey. He's such a sweet soul and he just tells his story. And, you know, you see that like anybody, it, like just keep going. You know, you never know who you're going to meet. And like William didn't let someone like Simon Cowell, who can be kind of a jerk, uh, didn't let didn't let him affect him. You know, he he took it and he and he made a success for himself. Wow. Amazing. And yes, yes. When you when you talked about the amount of people who, who have become huge successes. Like we all know them, they're down in history books. But then you hear the stories of the amount of no's they got and the reasons. I mean, I even heard recently that Oprah Winfrey was fired from a, a TV show because she wasn't fit for TV. And look at her now. <laughs> it's someone like Oprah Winfrey, if and that happened. And she so like had to go through that, you know, yes. and then, so that, then she became Oprah. She said, I'm going to rework this and yeah. put myself out there. So it like when you uh, like Chumba Wamba says, you know, when you get knocked down, you get up again and you just kind of like jump back up. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's OK to take a break, but just keep going. You're always going to be reinventing with those no's because you're, you're going to learn from them. You're going to learn. And that's the beautiful thing. It's it's always a growing journey. Wow. Yeah, it's all part of the process. I remember when I got um, one of the first groups I led. So I had finished secondary school and we had moved to this new place and this new church. And um, I somehow became the the leader of, of a group for uh, like a Bible study <laughs> sort of group that met during the week. Um, and some of the people who had been there before weren't really supporting the change. You know, we will have a meeting and they will come in late, but they will want me to finish early. <laughs> so, you know, there was a little bit of, um, should I say, a clash that was, that was happening. Mm -hmm. But I essentially just moved on i was like you know it's okay if you know you're not on board with this it's it's fine i literally just left them to their own <laughs> devices you know i you know i wasn't on, on their case um and i worked with the people who were available you know but i had a vision and i had a plan and i you know we we, we made it happen we will have this 
um, huge events where we will invite people from the community for like a party, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And when we saw that, okay, she's serious. Okay. <laughs> you know, she has plans. Okay. She's making things happen. They all came back. Mm -hmm. They all came back. They got involved. And that taught me a huge lesson that some people may not maybe want to join your community or support you when you get started because maybe they're just trying to figure you out like who are you really like <laughs> you know what are you about and sometimes you just need to say it's okay if you don't trust me enough yet it's fine i'm just gonna keep doing what i want to do don't let that throw you don't let that discourage you and as you keep going, then they're eventually going to say, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, they're going to they're gonna come on board. I thought that was a great, every time I think about that story, it, it reminds me to just keep going. Mm -hmm. Don't look at the naysayers. Don't look at the, you know, people who are discouraging you, people who aren't really, that, that's okay. <laughs> they're not there yet. At the relationship stage of, oh, I know you, I trust you, I support you. You know, mm -hmm. they'll get there eventually. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Keep building your like, no trust and keep on your passions and people will start to see that truth. It, I had the same thing happen, you know, this last year, you know, it's, people at first were a little skeptical, like, who is this? Who are you? You're, what are you doing here? You know, and I'm like, but most people were pretty supportive. And then I saw like you have your early adopters that, you know, support you. And then you get those kind of later adopters that come in after they feel comfortable after they know you a little bit more. And so, yeah, it's a, it's, part of the process for sure yeah all right now <laughs> any final words for an artist who's just getting started what would you say are maybe the top three tips that you have used over and over again that you would like to leave with any artist listening yes definitely well um a tip number one is to um learn how to share your story as an artist, you know, to be able to speak about your music, to be able to speak about what you're working on. Um, you know, I, I highly recommend, you know, creating electronic press kit to house everything. Um, and so that's something that's a huge takeaway as well um, for number one. For number two, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself a lot of grace on the journey. That's part of the journey, you know, an artist as myself, we can be our own worst critic. You know, that beautiful creative side that we have has that kind of equal and opposite side. And by knowing when that voice is coming out and how to say thank you for your critique and let it go, you know, learn from it, but don't let it run you. Mm -hmm. um, and always, um, you know, thinking about that. And then third tip would be, you know, again, find a community that you feel supported in. And if you can't find one, make one. <laughs> yes and i love that i love that so much the first the, the first part find a community that you feel supported in mm -hmm. if you are in a community and you don't feel supported that's not the right place for you that is not the right place for you find so some people they, they <laughs> it's almost like they don't know why they're in a community <laughs> like you join this community but i don't really see you engage are you are you getting enough are you asking the questions you need to ask? Are you using the community? Because that's the only way you're going to get the support you need. But if you've done all of that and you still don't feel supported, then there is another place for you where you can feel, you know, it's really important that it's in, it needs to be the right place for you. Definitely. I agree. Find what fits and it's okay to test the waters. It's a lot like dating. You got to you know, get through some bad eggs first sometimes, you know, not everything's a win on the first try, but you know, always give yourself the space to uh, find what works best for you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And tell us more about your community. If people wanted to check it out. Yeah, tell us more. Definitely. Yes. I'd love for you to check us out. We are AmplifyEDM.com. There you can find our upcoming events. You can find our podcast. You can find everything. Um, there's even I have a, you know, giveaway that's an artist resources page that gives you free tips to help you with your marketing um, and 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 do those things. And also we're on Instagram. So check us out at Amplify EDM and also on YouTube. But all of that is linked on AmplifyEDM.com. 
Yes, amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Kay. This has been such a great conversation. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, too. It's been a blast. Thank you so much for listening, everyone, and see you next time on another episode of the Fulfilled Music Printer Podcast. Bye for now.